Just walking to my uh, bee yard this morning. Uh, just a quick update. It's about 10 o'clock now. 10.30 a.m. Sun's still really low. Uh, minus 38 morning. And uh, let's see how the bees do. I'll take a quick uh, IR video just to, to see what the, the temperature profile looks like. A few dead bees this morning. Cold weather seems to, to push them out. You can see how I've got the piece of plywood out front right now. So that just helps with uh, the wind, the snow, and uh, keeping the bees from uh, flying out during this cold weather, if it ever gets sunny. Bit of a closed off entrance there. Open screen bottom board, so not too worried about it. I'll let it warm up before I do uh, any... Uh, scraping uh, it is colder than normal so it should be okay just taking a quick uh, IR image of my uh, my colonies minus 35 now I uh, got close to minus 39 this morning it's, I'm guessing around 11 o'clock now, so uh, there's a bit of sunlight reflecting off the colonies. Uh, but you can see that. Let's see, where's the entrance? There you go. Seems to be a little hot spot there, but. Not much activity in the colonies right now. Entrances are all freezing. Not much heat loss. So my setup's working as designed. I'll just take a video of the back. Just to see how the shell is holding in the heat. You can see there's a, a bit of heat signature at the uh, snow line down there, uh, but not much difference. So my shell seems to be doing what it's supposed to. I'll check this other corner. Just pull back. Falling. So every day, everything's pretty much the the air temperature. So the negative there is just a surface reflection temperature. So okay, battery's almost dead. So this blue line here or not the blue line, this intersection here, that's actually the tape line. So you're gonna see how, where the bubble foil wrap, wraps around, there's a bit of heat loss there. And over here. I'm just gonna finish uh, explaining this IR image uh, because I guess the battery died on the uh, FLIR camera because it's really cold. So looks like I get about five minutes of uh, of filming time but uh, 
So you'll notice the best time to take uh, FLIR pictures is at night. So you eliminate all the, uh, the, the solar radiation coming off the materials because a lot of this material is, is uh, reflective. So it's important uh, if you actually want a, an accurate image is to do it uh, uh, at night or early morning before the sun comes up. So you can see the uh, this is where I stepped in the snow. So it's nice and white. So you, you get a lot of reflection. So it, uh, it may make you think that there's heat loss or a heat signature there. So the darker colors represent uh, colder temperatures and the brighter colors typically represent uh, heat. So over here in my house, you can see there's uh, bright at the chimney. So right now I've got a, a fire going and I've got really poor windows in my house. So you can see how uh, two of my windows uh, emit a lot of heat. So back to the colony here. So the, these really bright spots on top here. So you can see the styrofoam shape uh, just leaning on top of these colonies and then there's some brightness there. So uh, I do have the bubble foil wrap uh, and some styrofoam in the back but a lot of heat is actually still released through the top of these colonies and this is where it's coming out, uh, where there's breaks and seals. So you can see over here, this is the handle of the top medium box. And it's always uh, fairly hot, because if you look at the thickness of the styrofoam, uh, actually it's here, but uh, this is where the tape seam on the bubble far wrap is. And you can see where the heat from the uh, coming off the colonies imitates up and uh, it comes out. So technically I could add some more tape here to seal that up to keep more of the heat inside. And over here you can see there's uh, heat coming off uh, out of these colonies. So it emits out of the back. It probably accumulates below some of the styrofoam and it just comes out. So nothing too much to be worried about. Uh, the front of these colonies, hardly any dead bees. There's a few. I collected a few here. I'll just do some quick gut checks because I'm curious. And you can see most of the entrances are really cold, which tells me the bees are in cluster. And at this, uh, at minus 38, uh, bees will be in cluster regardless how much insulation you have. Sounds good. So I'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Okay, during my uh, inspection, I also took the time to take my uh, my temperatures off my broodminders. Uh, so this uh, here, the single control, so it's a single box with top insulation, side insulation, the bubble floor wrap, but no bees inside. Uh, so like right now, for example, it, it, the temperature has dropped to minus 38 outside. And you can see currently inside the box, it's around minus 20. Uh, this purple line here, that's the sensor on the bottom board. So you can see how it it's the lead when it comes to cold. And then as the temperature drops, uh, the sensors all get together. And these other sensors are in the upper box on top of a bunch of honey frames. So you can see how it, the impact of having honey frames, uh, it's not minus 38 inside the box. So, but what it does, it does smooth out the, uh, the temperature profile quite a bit. So that's thermal lag in action. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just go to the next colony. So this one here is the colony without a slatted rack. Uh, the other thing you'll notice, just take this outside temperature out because uh, it's not relevant for my location, is I've, I have a, the sensor right at the entrance. Uh, they actually don't like super cold, so minus 38 is uh, really cold for these sensors, so it shuts down. Uh, so hence the reason you can see the drop there, so hopefully as the temperature warms up again, it'll reactivate. Uh, and I do have one at the center of the screen bottom board, which is an important one for me, for what I'm trying to do. So you can see how the... The sensors on top here, those are the squiggly line ones. So that's inside the cluster and those are the bees activating, generating heat. Uh, these are 
their hourly readings. So if I had more granular readings, I'd, I'd have a better idea of what's going on in there. And these other lines here is outside of the cluster. And you can see that the outside of the cluster is about three degrees to one degree Celsius or just uh, below zero. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's expected. Uh, but it's still 38 degrees warmer than outside. And then these bottom ones are the, you can see how the distance from here to the nearest uh, warmer sensors is quite big. So that tells me that the cluster is super tight. And uh, because there's a connection between outside temperature and proximity to the cluster uh, affects the, the temperatures here. And then humidity is humidity. So I'll just go to the next one. <clears throat> again, I'll take out the outside temperature because it's not relevant. And again, you can see how uh, the center, the bottom of the screen board here is about minus 15. And on the previous one, uh, let's see where it was at. it was closer to minus 20. So five degrees difference between the slatted rack versus non-slatted rack. Uh, so which tells me that the non-slatted rack, the cluster is tighter and further away from the bottom board. Okay, and then over here, you can see that the, the coldest temperature in the second series here, the smooth series, so the temperatures outside the cluster are starting to drop. Uh, so they're probably, yeah, so three to eight degrees. So they're, that's how much warmer they are from the other one also. Uh, nothing surprising here. Uh, you can see that this one sensor here is too far away from my sub hub. And there's a lot of flatness in that line. So it tells me that a lot of the hourly readings aren't being recorded by the sub hub. So for that sensor there, I'll have to capture it directly uh, and basically sync it directly with my phone when I go out for readings. But uh, so that's what a colony, colony looks like at minus 38. So the actual temperature is down here. Uh, and you can see that nothing really has changed. And other than the temperature below the colony has dropped, uh, the bees seem to be doing fine. There's no extreme squiggly lines, there's extreme drops, so it tells me that the bees are adjusting quite well and just not noticing a lot of dead bees at the entrance and on the front tells me that uh, this cold snap has had minor impact. So hopefully this helps and I'll keep giving you some updates. And over here, just so you know, I do have one uh, double. Uh, and it's got a single temperature sensor on top of the top box. Uh, and my gut feel is the cluster here is lower in the colony and hasn't made its way up yet. So it's a, a double with lots of honey. So I'm not too worried about that one. So we'll pause it there.